I have two in-person guests for our Project Sinatra. One of whom is a guitarist, another an accompanist. The names are Bill Miller and Al Viola. Al... Nice to be here. Is oh. it true that you were on an album date with Dorsey and Sinatra called Polka Dots and Moonbeams? Yes. Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, you must have been the best uh, three-year-old guitar player in the business. No, no, wait a while. <laughs> not, we did the tune. I know about the tune. Remember the tune? Yes. But with Dorsey? Was, uh, uh, no, I remember Tommy Dorsey, that album. The I Remember yes. Dorsey album, because I was reading in some credits, and the, and the, in the credits listed which I read, it was an early Dorsey recording, and I thought, I know Al, it couldn't have been. Uh, I want to direct my first question, I think, aside from the polka dots and moonbeams, Al, to Bill Miller. Bill, I was at the Watertown session. Sinatra was working with headphones because the tracks, as you know, had been previously laid down. Uh, Michael and Peter was one of the tunes of which he recorded at that time. As he said in an interview with me, Razor Blades, that night, how did you and he combine in that three or four hours to get the laryngitis out of his throat so he came through with one of the most beautiful albums he ever recorded? What happens back there when you go back and run scales? And you talk it over and you work it out. Do you recall that afternoon? Somehow or other, he manages to get rid of those um, razor blades, as you call it. Yes. Just by uh, yeah, he called it. <laughs> singing a few phrases mm -hmm. in the back room, so to speak. I see. Yes. You know maybe for 15 or 20 minutes. It just came through, and it I shall, disappears. I shall never forget, because, I mean, he tried, and, and then he came back uh, and worked out with you a little while, and I remember Gaudio was there yeah. and producing some of the work that uh, he and Holmes had done. And he looked at me when that take was right, and he said, how does he do it? And I thought there must be some magic formula in that back room with Bill Miller and Frank Sinatra, which pulled it out. Bill, how did you and uh, Sinatra happen to get together? You playing piano in Las Vegas and he Oh, that's there. a long time ago, yeah. yeah. 19, uh, latter part of 1951. Right. I had a trio behind uh, behind the bar at the Desert Inn Hotel in mm -hmm. Vegas. And uh, Frank came through. Uh, uh, let's see, he had been uh, to Reno, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he came to Vegas and um, I guess he liked my work because... <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat obvious you were... Well, of wow. course. <laughs> when, was, when, was, when was that, around the early 50s? It was September or something or other in 1951. 1951, and throughout this entire period you have been, uh, not only has he come Well, I started but doing this, uh, go with it. He, had a, he had a TV show at the time, opposite Milton Berle. Yes. Uh, from, let's see, they started the show in September, the latter part of September of 51, in New York. Mm -hmm. They did it in New York for six weeks, and uh, I was led to believe that uh, I would be called to do the TV show out here when it came to L.A., you see. And I did get the call, and, uh, well, that was the beginning. This latest album, as you know, is the uh, Old Blue Eyes is Back album, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful album, of course. Costa and Jenkins. What would you like to have, after all this association with Frank, what type of follow-up album would you like to see Frank do? Not from any discussion with him, just your own thinking. Oh, I would like to hear him sing, let's see, how can I phrase it? Uh, a swinging album. Al Viola, guitarist, excellent guitarist. I've walked work so many times. What is your appraisal of Sinatra as a musician? Well, uh, the compliment I could give Sinatra is he's he's like one of us. He is a musician. So that's that's, that's the highest. That's the, that's the highest. You've been here with him actually. You're on almost every record session he makes, let's face that. You go on the tours with him. What was the most exciting experience? Live recording sessions, concerts, you know, some of the several European tours, the charity concerts, the London thing. I think the world tour. The world tour. Yeah, because that involved uh, where he really uh, had to really put out, I mean, work. Uh, it was not a nightclub, mm. you know. It's like certain concerts or uh, clubs, things. Of, but the world tour, it was a question of uh, that he, uh, it was an obligated thing, you know, to each country. 
and uh, what should I don't think it was uh, I don't think it was publicized that much, was it, Bill? No, it wasn't. No, but anyway, Can I but that's for a yes. Go ahead. Yes. Don't forget, that's we only worked with, with with six men. That's we right. only worked that's with right. six men, mm -hmm. and that uh, that's uh, good point. To, to uh, play to uh, perform for a capacity, you know, audience with only six yeah. men. Yeah. It's a tough. Of tracks. There's one track oh, there of day in day out with that small. He, mm -hmm. he sounded he he so up. great, so beautiful. You Do know, you have? A, I don't don't think about it even for a moment, Al. Do you have a favorite song Sinatra ever recorded? It's last night when we were young. That to me is, it's like, uh, let me say, when I first heard a Rainy Day. Yes. And that, Frank did that at the 500 Club. And uh, that's a great tune. Now, in, in just, just, I would say, just in the last three years, uh, jazz musicians and, uh, and some singers are now uh, hitting on it, you know, mm -hmm. and like they discovered it. Right. But I, I heard Frank sing it at the 500 Club, it was like, like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, he still does Last Night When We Were Young. Yes. But it's a beautiful song, and that's when he does that, that that's really, that, that, that's my favorite. I think Al Viola has said it all. Orchestration by Gordon Jenkins. Album, September of My Years. Song, Last Night When We Were Young. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Project Sinatra continues. Was there was there ever a recording session on which you appeared, Al, where there was more than the usual amount of trouble? Well, yes, but uh, I've been fortunate because you know I I just uh, uh, the the days that I've been on, because like I said, I didn't I haven't done all the albums, but I did quite. I had a nice. A taste of it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, but uh, uh, like the things I've done, it's just uh, one or two takes. There's good songs and good arrangements, so I've been I've been fortunate to hear the good things, you know, uh, or, and no problems at all, you know. Bill Miller, so, do you have I a don't favorite know, maybe song? Bill, uh, but do you have a favorite song? You've been in association with him since 1950. A favorite song? How's that? Oh, <laughs> you're making it tough. <laughs> you're seven you're card, it tough well. seven card draw here. <laughs> <laughs> When your lover is gone. Lover is gone. All right. Back to my conversation with Bill Miller. Do you have another favorite, Bill? I get along without you very well. That's two ballads. Yeah. You know, well, that's, yeah. you know, I like to go on and on. All right. Another favorite song from our in-person guest, Bill Miller, I Get Along Without You Very Well. Project Sinatra continues. I feel so highly privileged to be interviewing Sonny Burke and Billy May and and uh, you, Al, and uh, Santa Cola, and uh, because you people have been associated with him over a period of time, not a call-in on a record date. That's right. You know the man inside and out. You know his characteristics. What do you feel, Bill, is the prime characteristic within the man which has been the greatest contributory factor to his continued success? Performance performance in person or on on the on records tremendous responsibility even in, in a recording studio oh, yeah. when he knows it can be done over oh yeah right. he has technique yes his microphone technique he has uh everything he needs he doesn't even like to use a set of earphones no. nothing there he no. wants to hear the whole band he wants to do it live oh sure the marvelous thing to watch in right, right. you find the same thing to be true you yes it, especially today because uh not just uh, you know the things I've done with Frank, but I've done other things with uh, a lot of singers, you know, yes. in there today. And uh, and he's the only one that uh, has, uh, that still likes to hear the band and 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 have it live, you know. Have it live. Yeah, just just, just so no no gimmicks, no uh, no sound effects, uh, just Sinatra and uh, an orchestra. He even wants you to know. hear the band. Uh, well, uh, sure, uh, he, he wants to feature the band, you know, uh, as often as he can. <laughs> I'm thinking about what final question should I ask. I have some choices from Bill as to the songs he recorded because this an interview which we are doing now 
is involving itself with some of the music you have selected. And I think it, I'm very pleased with some of the things you have said. Al, you mentioned a couple of ballads in addition to Try a Little Tenderness. Frank, in the past, other than the small group with which he worked, has done so very few things that were not largely orchestrated. The Jobim album, maybe not all that orchestrated. But what comes to your mind now in the sessions you worked with Sinatra as a swinging guitarist, which really jumped all the way from start to finish? It was his first album. Right. And it was a reprise. Right. And I thought it was a, it was the Ring-a-Ding. You like the Ring-a-Ding? But yeah, because I have, uh, like, you know, I have like a library of the Sinatra albums. Yes. That's it. And, and if you were, uh, if you, you know, came to my house in the den, I have all the albums just out in the, uh, in front. And that album is the is the first one that shows with the, the ring with the straw hat, right? And the, the, right whatever, okay. You know, it's wild, but the and his the wink of the eye. But that was the like, I, I felt that he he, he was very happy then at that, that particular uh, session, mm -hmm. and the idea the, uh, the 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 company, the you know the reprise thing, and that's that, and it's 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 a swinger, you know. Well, Johnny Mandel always swings. We have been talking with Al Viola, guitarist who has been on innumerable recording sessions and live performances with Frank Sinatra, and Bill Miller, who has been his accompanist, companion, advisor. Drinking partner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For some time now. And I want to ask Bill a final question. I'm second. <laughs> Off stage, on stage, quietly, drinking partner, when... Do you recall Sinatra at his happiest? Happiest? Wow. Would it be the end of a successful recording session? That or the end of a, oh, a special performance when he's, you know, it, it, any performer would like to top, any artist would like to top his past performance. Yes. He can't always do it. Yes. He can maybe come up to par. You really came upon something I'm recalling right now in an interview I did with him, must have been shortly before his retirement, in which he mentioned the two-night concert in London for the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Right. And in a line I recall, he said, that might quite possibly have been my finest hour. So you have given me a confirmation of his own remark. Thank you. Our in-person guests, Bill Miller and Al Viola. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Project Sinatra continues.